Today I'm looking at some Oscillations past paper questions. Again, this was a request from one of my viewers or subscribers. So I've chosen some questions that are not long answer questions because I did an example of a six marker, a classic resonance example in my video on oscillations and resonance. So if that's what you're after, go and have a look at that video. This one is about using the rest of oscillations in some way. So I started off with a couple of multiple choice that I think are nice and sort of illustrate the kinds of things you need to know. And then we'll do some calculations. There haven't been many calculation questions in oscillations in the home A-level recently. It's mostly been uh, six markers or long answer questions explaining either damping or resonance. So we are due to have them. If you're doing IAL, it does come up quite regularly. Okay, so this is multiple choice. A mass was hung from the end of spring one and set into vertical oscillation. Another mass is hung from spring two and also set into oscillation. These are the values for the maximum velocity, angular frequency and amplitude. So which statements are correct? So for this one, you need to know that the Vmax is equal to a omega. This is the same as V equals r omega from circular motion, where r is the radius of the circle. And so in this situation, it's an open circle, as in a wave motion, and your radius of that circle becomes the amplitude of the oscillation. And so if we look at V1, V1 is equal to a omega v2 is equal to a over 2 times 2 omega, which basically means that v2 is equal to a omega as well. So v1 and v2 have got to be equal to the same speed, giving us answer c. In the second one, again, you need to know your graphs for simple harmonic motion, and you need to be able to picture these things because they like to test do you understand the relationship between displacement, velocity, and acceleration for an oscillating object. So this is a particle undergoing simple harmonic motion. I always like to think about these as a trolley. So you picture a trolley between two springs, and you think about where the velocity of that trolley would be maximum, where its acceleration would be maximum, etc. So this is the graph here. And we can see that at time equals zero, we have a velocity of zero. So we know that at time equals zero, we must be at one of the two extremes of the motion because that's when your trolley stops momentarily before it starts coming in the opposite direction. Because we're at the extremes, we know that this is also where one of those springs is stretched to its maximum, and therefore the force on the trolley will be at its maximum, and therefore the acceleration is at its maximum. So we know we're going to start with a maximum acceleration. The next thing we have to figure out is which direction is that acceleration going to be going in. So if we start at a maximum negative or a maximum positive acceleration. So if we look at our graph here for velocity again, we can see that just after time equals zero, our velocity is increasing to a maximum left, which means that the trolley must be going in that direction. It's going to reach its maximum velocity as it reaches the equilibrium position here. So that means if the trolley is on its way left, then its acceleration is also at a maximum left. And that means that we are going to start with a maximum negative acceleration. So now we just need to look at our multiple choice and see which of these starts with a maximum negative acceleration. And you can see that that is B. On to the long answer questions. This is a musical box, and as you rotate the cylinder, it sets the little steel strips oscillating at a different frequency, therefore producing a musical note. State the condition for an oscillation to be simple harmonic. This is a very common question, and you'll note that there are two marks. So there are two things that they are always expecting you to say, and you would need to write this out here, but the points that you would make is that acceleration is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium position. Now, you can use a and x, but you'd have to define what a and x are in this situation, so you might as well just write out the words. So acceleration is proportional to displacement from the equilibrium position, but, and this is our second mark, opposite in direction. You could also say always towards the equilibrium position here for the same point. And it's a nice thing to remember that it is, in fact, always towards equilibrium. 
Now, when I do these questions, I often write in shorthand like this. Please do remember in an exam that you must write the words out. And I know it's painful. Nobody likes it, but you do have to do that. Bit of a calculation next. The end of one steel strip moves through three millimeters from one extreme position to the other extreme position. This is a trap waiting for you to write down that the amplitude of the oscillation is three millimeters and of course it is not the amplitude of the oscillation is 1.5 millimeters and you have to put that into si units so the first thing you should do is just start writing out what you are given and the si unit for that and it makes 1600 complete oscillations in five seconds so if we have 1600 in five seconds that means that we have a frequency of 1600 divided by five 320 hertz. We want the maximum acceleration of this strip, and we should know that A max is equal to minus omega squared A, or in circular motion, omega squared R. So again, amplitude and radius are equivalent in the mathematics for this. For omega, we need to use the frequency, so omega is equal to 2 pi f, which ends up being 2010.62 keep that in your calculator, square it, and multiply it by 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3, which is our amplitude, and you should get an answer of minus 6064 meters per second squared. Generally, in these calculations, they do not require the minus, but you might as well just leave it there. The three marks here. When you see a relatively straightforward, or what appears to be a straightforward calculation, but it's three marks, then you look up through and look at what you've given in the question very carefully, because there's likely to be some kind of issue with the information that they're giving you, in this case, the amplitude. Slightly longer answer question here. The sound made by the musical box mechanism is quiet, but when the mechanism is placed on a wooden table, there's a large increase in the loudness of the sound. Okay, we have to remember, that the sound that is produced is caused by the oscillation of the air molecules between the mechanism, the table, and your ears. The musical box is obviously the driver in this situation, and it is forcing the wooden table to oscillate with the same frequency. So that's the first thing we'll write down. The box here is the driver. That means that there's a transfer of energy from the box to the table. Now, the table is much larger than the box, so when the table oscillates, a much larger volume of air is caused to oscillate. And this, of course, gives you the louder sound. please do feel free to organize your thoughts into bullet points like this. And do pause before you start writing here, because it's very easy to start getting caught up in what you want to say. Stop and think first. And think about how you're going to present your ideas so that they make the most sense, and then do it in bullet points. You're doing your examiner a favor. They need to see that you make three points and separate points of physics, so separate them in your head, get them down on paper, and get into the habit of doing this when you do practice questions. The next question, when a ship is sailing on a rough sea, the waves can set the ship into simple harmonic motion. This can result in passengers becoming seasick. What is meant by simple harmonic motion? This is another way of asking the previous question that we had, which was what was the, or the conditions for simple harmonic motion? So the conditions or what is meant by this is the same answer. Simple harmonic motion is an oscillation in which the acceleration of an object is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium position, but opposite in direction. So again, I'm going to write it out in shorthand. You need to write it out in words. Make sure you do that, though, because you won't necessarily get credit for writing it out like this. At one position on the ship, experience a vertical oscillation of amplitude 0.85, with a period of six seconds. So no traps that we can see here. They're in SI units already. Calculate the maximum acceleration. A similar calculation is equal to minus omega squared A. Uh, we need omega, which is two pi over T. And if you do that calculation, you'll find you get 1.047 rads per second. Square that, multiply it by the 0.85 meters, and you should get 
minus 0 0.93 meters per second squared. The second part of the question gives us a graph that we have to interpret. The passengers may suffer from seasickness as the ship rises and falls on the waves. The graph shows the limits of the passengers' tolerances to the oscillatory motion. Determine whether the passengers are likely to feel seasick as a result of the ship's motion. So we said that the acceleration is 0 0.93 meters per second squared. Um, you'll notice that on the y-axis here, it's the ratio of acceleration to the acceleration due to gravity. So we need to find out what that is. And so we divide 0.93 by 9.81, and we get 0 0.095, or about 0.1. And if we look at the x-axis, we'll see its period of the motion. And just double-checking our data, the period is 6 seconds. So we know that we are finding the intersection of 0 0.095 and 6 seconds and seeing in which category does that fall. And it does say, use your value from B part 1, which was our acceleration, and show how you've used the graph so it's important to draw these things in here. Um, regardless of how accurate we are with our 0 0.095 here on the y-axis, it's going to fall within the tolerable range. And since it falls within the tolerable range, it is unlikely. This is one of the reasons why I chose this question, because here we go back with the graphs again. But this one is slightly unusual, because of course, our displacement is never reaches zero. So it never goes strictly negative, as in below the composition of the sea. Because the waves, of course, are moving through the sea. They want us to add to the graph to show how the acceleration of the passenger varies over the same time interval. Okay. Again, we are looking at maximum displacement means maximum acceleration. But remember, acceleration is proportional to displacement, so therefore they're both at a maximum, but in the opposite direction. We know that our acceleration is at a maximum negative. We also know that our acceleration is going to be zero at about halfway between the peak and trough here. So we can put in some points that we're going to draw our line through. That's going to be our maximum positive acceleration. We want to try and keep our amplitude very similar above and below that time axis. Then that's going to be zero. That's going to be our maximum negative. Make sure your amplitude is the same. Then we have our zero and so on through the same time interval. So just continue it on. Don't give up too early, because if you do that, you're going to lose out. And then you want to try and draw a smooth curve through all of those points. Not very easy on the screen, I'll grant you, but it should look something like that. The acceleration does go from positive to negative here. Remember, because you are changing direction, you're being pulled back to the equilibrium position all the time, even though the displacement never actually goes negative. Another reason why I chose this particular question was because you have to remember that oscillations or simple harmonic motion are just extended mechanics. And often you get questions that mix the two together, like this one. So you need to review your free body force diagrams, you need to review your Newton's laws, you need to review forces in general and how they work, because of course, this is all about force. There's a resultant force here that's causing these oscillations. So a free body force diagram, we have the weight of the passenger. When standing on a weighing scale, so when the sea is calm, it's 75 kilograms. So our free body force diagram is the weight downwards and then our normal contact force acting upwards from the top of the weighing scales. Those should be roughly the same length. It isn't a scale, so you don't need to worry about them being exactly the same length, but just do make sure that by eye, they look the same length. Okay, this is part one of D, so we know that there's a part two coming up. On a rough sea, the ship oscillates vertically with a large amplitude. Explain why the reading on the weighing scales will vary. Now, the reading on the weighing scales, very importantly here, is not the weight of the person. It's the normal contact force. So that is what the scale is giving you. Now, when you're in a situation where you're just standing without any acceleration going on, 
then the normal contact force is going to be equal to your weight. But it's key to remember that the scale measures the normal contact force, not the weight. And of course, let's imagine then that you're on your way up in this wave. So you are accelerating upwards as the waves push you upwards. That acceleration comes from the object that you're standing on, in this case, the wing scale. So at that point, while you're moving upwards, you are now accelerating upwards. So we get an acceleration towards the equilibrium position. And if we have an acceleration, then we must have a resultant force in that same direction. That resultant force has to be provided by something, and it's being provided by the normal contact force. So the normal contact force increases so that it balances both the weight and provides the force for the acceleration. So when you're at the bottom of this oscillation, just about to come up, remember that's where your acceleration is the maximum, that is when the resultant force will be the greatest and the normal contact force will be equal to weight plus resultant force. And of course, conversely, at the top, your normal contact force only has to balance how much of your weight is not causing your acceleration. So the weight there provides the resultant force that accelerates you downwards. And the normal contact force, the reading on the scale, is only going to balance whatever is left over of your weight. Finishing it off with another calculation, whilst the passenger is standing on the weighing scales, the maximum acceleration is this. What is the reading on the scale? So first we need to know the mass of the passenger. I think they told us up here, 75 kgs. Okay. The maximum reading, of course, will be when you're at the bottom of the oscillation, just about to come upwards where our normal contact force is equal to weight plus our resultant force that's causing this acceleration. So that means our normal contact force is going to be 75 times 9.81, which is the weight of the passenger, plus 75 times 0 0.7, which is the acceleration of the passenger. If you do that calculation, you get 788 newtons. Now, unless this is a Newton scale, which would be unusual, we now have to divide that again by 9.81 to tell us what the scale would read 80.4 kg. So even though the passenger is 75 kgs, right at the bottom of that oscillation, it's going to read 80.4. These are just some examples of the kind of question that you can get. I've tried to mix it up a little bit. Again, if you want long answer six mark questions, please go to my oscillations video where I talk you through the sort of standard answer for resonance questions. Um, this is the sort of alternative possibilities that can come up with oscillations.